so uh, the pattern identification models are a bit more difficult because they you have to actually find the patterns either a symmetrical triangle head and shoulders um, uh, wedges and things like that so you have to look carefully to find them now on the Sanam iTrade website for our trading clients uh, we've got a very good tool called auto chartist now what we'll do is we'll make that available for you guys as well because what that does it identifies patterns in real time on the market so instead of you having to scan 40 or 60 shares every now and then to see is there a head and shoulders or some other pattern it does it for you so you can look at that there are also uh, tutorials webinars tutorials videos to see how it works so that will tell you there's a breakout and a, and, and a pattern that's forming and that can help you to do some more analysis and, uh, and use the technical analysis. Uh, the oscillators work, all of them work roughly in the same way. They've either moved between uh, 0 and 1 or 0 and 100 or minus 100 and plus 100, things like that. It's an oscillator. So you always buy when it's in the bottom quartile and the trend indicator broke through or you sell at the top quartile when the indicator broke down. Um, to read about it, you can read the modules that I've written there. You can also buy a book. There's a recommended book section. Um, there's one very good book which is easy to understand on technical analysis. It's called A to Z of Technical Analysis. A uh, really good book. You can get it on Kalahari. Um, it's not very expensive and it's, it's written in plain language. Um, you, you will be daunted by the number of indicators there are. So let me tell you from experience, uh, the patterns, we, we use mostly the bed and shoulders. It's a very reliable pattern as a reversal. Uh, triangles are good, uh, but make sure you know how to construct a triangle. I've seen technical analysts on TV doing it wrong. They, they identify a triangle which is not a triangle. Um, but uh, triangles are good. Uh, the best one is the rising wedge. It's a lovely one. If you see a rising wedge, um, you know, I'm not going to go into technical analysis now, but you've got uh, basically a flat line, um, and uh, the, the bottoms keep getting higher. But if you meet the resistance there, so that the bottoms keep on getting higher. So it's like a coil that's winding up. And when that thing breaks out, you usually get quite a good movement. So those are, the, the, I think, the more important ones. Um, then the, uh, on, on the oscillators, we basically use mostly MACD uh, and uh, the stochastics. So if you read about that, RSI as well, maybe, but stochastics and uh, MACD, uh, moving average convergence, divergence, that's MACD. Uh, they're the important ones to concentrate on, maybe. I don't know if you... Uh, what's your f what's your favorite, uh, Johannes? Yeah, you, you touched it. Like yeah, most most people stick to those. Okay, so there's some good books. There's some modules that you can learn. Uh, we've also got a DVD. We just got reprinted. It is an it's it's that was done in 2007, but uh, the principles are still the same. So if you would like one, we'll get uh, we'll get you a copy. Uh, of that, that one when it's out of print, uh, when it comes out of, from back from the printers. Okay, so that, those are the learning center. And I think uh, the next one I, I think that you will use, that you should use quite often is the research, company research mostly. So these research reports are there to use. Um, they come out quite regularly. We get our research from three sources. Uh, our own Sunlam private investment guys, uh, they do research on, on most of the top 40 companies, the, the shares that they watch for the portfolios. Then we buy research from IntelliDex for the mid-cap companies. IntelliDex is quite a good research house. Uh, it's run by Stuart Theobald, um, who's uh, uh, author, or is, is the editor of the Investors Monthly uh, uh, supplement in business day uh, so very good and then we also get we, there's a need for the smaller companies as well and you don't often find good research on these smaller companies some of the research you find are really 
a bit of uh, thumb suck. Uh, we buy research from uh, uh, Mercantech Capital, uh, and they really do good research. They do a very good DCA valuation, a discounted cash flow valuation, and a peer group valuation for some of the smaller IT companies and, and uh, even Altex companies. So look at the research. Uh, I think you'll find quite good ideas there. Uh, and uh, obviously buy old and sell recommendations. Uh, then uh, share data will be very important for you because you know, it, I don't think it's uh, very advisable to just read what somebody else writes and then go and buy it. You have to do some of your own research. Go and look at what's the current P-E ratio because that report might be a month old. And the P-E ratio might be much higher now and makes the share very expensive. Um, so uh, as you can hear from what we say, a share is, we call a share expensive or cheap based on the P-E ratio, not on the price. A share of 100 rand can be a lot more, a lot cheaper than a share of 5 rand because we look at the P-E ratio. That is the important one that tells you expensive or not. Um, okay, so share data, all the shares on the JC is covered there. Um, the uh, shares that you allow to trade is only the top 100, like the... Uh, uh, virtual competition that you entered into, so you must stick to that top 100. Uh, I will check if the list is available, if not I'll send the list to you. So for the, for the time being for Monday, uh, just stay within the shares you know are on top 100. Okay. Um, <coughs> now all the shares are covered here, so you can read about any share. Um, and if we just go to, to one of the shares, I just want to show you a few of the pages there. So which share would you like to go to? One of the top hundred shares. Capital and counties. Capital and counties. It's one I don't know very well, but uh, yeah. Properties in the, in the UK, they, I saw the last report that I saw, uh, very positive. It was rated a, a good buy by one of the uh, international research. I think we get research from Deutsche Bank as well. Uh, so there's capital and counties. So this is very easy. You don't need share codes for this. You, you just go on the name. Um, the first thing it shows you is it's just a summary page. Now, uh, there's a very brief explanation of the last results. Um, uh, there are many, many pages to look at. The ones I, I always look at, I look at, uh, after I've decided to buy a company, I always look at directors' dealings as well. Because it's important to see if there are some directors offloading big chunks of shares. Don't always be alarmed. Sometimes it's uh, options that become available that they have to do. Uh, and sometimes a guy would sell, well, for us, would be 3 million rand, which is huge. But for him, it's th he's, got a he's got maybe 100 million there, and he wanted to paint his house. You know, and it's a big house. It costs 3 million to paint the house. So, uh, don't always be alarmed. But in, especially in the smaller shares, if you see directors offloading, uh, that's, that's important. So you can look at uh, the directors' dealings there. Um, one that uh, consensus forecast is, 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 is helpful, but I want to warn you not to rely too much on it. Because these directors' dealings, uh, so this page will show you wherever at the, uh, the ach, not directors, the uh, core forecast, whenever a consensus forecast change then they will put it on this list. So you don't have to go to every share to see if there's a change in the, f in the consensus forecast from buy, hold, or sell. Uh, this page will give you those changes. So if you look at those changes, you can see Tongaat uh, was changed from a hold to a sell, uh, Resilient from a hold to sell, Aspen from a sell to a hold. Um, so if you go to the, the page there, you'll see... Uh, Basically, there's not much consensus. <laughs> uh, it's virtually the same uh, number of buys, buys, holds, and sells. I also find, you can see there, number of contributors. So there were six research analysts that contributed to this view. And there's their forecast earnings, which is quite helpful as well. The uh, three-year forecast earnings and dividends. What I find, though, is that the updates are very slow. 
Um, you know, uh, they are going to bring in, I've spoken to Profile Media, Profile Media uh, does all this fundamental work. They also publish the Stock Exchange Handbook. Um, so, uh, what you get is you get that Stock Exchange Handbook online updated every day. So, you don't really need the handbook. Uh, you've got it, yeah, plus much more information than you get in the handbook. Uh, they're going to put the uh, trading updates here because I see a trading update. Um, ShopRite coming up, say our profits would be 40% up. And you still see 22% uh, forecast here for a long time. So, it, 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 you know, the, the updating is not very fast. But it can give you an idea, um, especially if there's a change in the, in the forecast. From, a, say, from a hold to a buy, from a sell to an hold. That's a good indicator that something is turning in the company. Okay, then. Um, the detailed, detailed uh, information so it gives you the nature of the business. So if you don't know the company, you can find out the nature of the business. It gives you the shareholders, the bigger shareholders. It gives you the contributions to the profits. A very good summary if you don't have the time to go into the full uh, results uh, pages. Um, You've got performance valuations. Uh, so that gives you a more a longer term return uh, on your investment, including dividends. Um, and then you've got the market stats, which is updated daily. Gives you the P ratio and the dividend yield. Because you don't find that on IRIS, the P ratio, unfortunately. Um, and in the results, um, you can have a, a brief results and, and uh, analysis. And then you can even download the actual glossaries, glossies, the actual annual reports, if you want to really go deep into it. So you, you don't have to keep a stack of those in your uh, library. Uh, you can download the actual glossies here. But don't do it on a dongle, because some of those files are pretty big. Uh, do it on an ASDL line or something like that. Okay, there's also uh, interesting factors on the uh, features on the toolbox. Um, if you go to Sense News, you can search for any term or any company under Sense News. Uh, now, Sense, uh, do you know what Sense News is? Most of you do, not everybody. Sense is a JSE's news service. So any news that uh, you that you release as a listed company must be released on Sense first. That is to ensure that everybody gets it at the same time. So you can't release results and not and, and then the people who are there know and they phone their buddies and trade quickly. You must release it on Sense and then you have your presentation. Um, Apps, uh, they're very serious about this. Apps are by uh, accident released it to Financial Mail with an embargo, but Financial Mail printed it before it was released on Sense. And they were called into the JSC and they had to apologize and, and so on, uh, and promise it will never happen again. Uh, so that is very important to look at the Sense news feeds. So you can search there if you look for, want to look for specific words or specific companies. You also find it on the company page. Um, let's just go back. You'll see this uh, home page. And you'll see there, there's some latest news and an archive as well on that company. OK. Anything else about fundamental analysis information that you want to ask me about on the website? Any questions at this stage? Okay, so you've got access to everything. Is there any way that we could export some of the data to something like Excel? Uh, the, you can export your portfolio stuff on, on Iris. Uh, yes, uh, you can export that, but, uh, but not, not the charting uh, inf information, to build your own charts and stuff, no. But your portfolio information and so on, you can export on IRSL. In terms of sense, 
uh, on the iOS platform when I was doing the trades. I couldn't download some of the information mm. there. It used to tell me that I needed a link or something like that. Yeah, now I know what you're talking about. There's two, every news story's got two uh, uh, titles. And the one is a PDF and the one is an internet-based one. Um, and it's a PDF one, I think, that doesn't download. But you can always download the other version of it. Uh, it's, a, it's some bug in their system, which they haven't sorted out yet. So just use the other link uh, to the story. There will always be two links to every story. So use the other link. It's the same story. I just want to understand how fundamental analysis can help us in the next six months. Because I view fundamental analysis as something of a much longer term. Yeah. Then, because like PE ratios, if I look at a PE ratio, I think it's expensive, but the market will only catch up later, maybe even next year. Mm -hmm. So, how will fundamental analysis uh, help us? What what I what I do if I trade short term is I use technical analysis and fundamental analysis together. So, fundamental analysis I will identify good companies that are not too expensive. So, what you said about PE ratio, that's fundamental analysis. Uh, that is not technical. So I'll use that to identify a group of companies that are good quality, good value, um, and not too expensive. Then I will take those, that list of companies and I will go and look at their technicals. And that will tell me, well, maybe wait a few weeks before you buy this one. Or the time is right, I can buy now. The oscillators are at the bottom and turning up. Um, the, there's maybe a pattern. You don't always find patterns in such a short time. But you might find a pattern as well to say it's reversing upwards. So if you've got confirmation from a few tick boxes, then you buy. So uh, for, 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 this, for the six-month period, um, yeah, I'll look more to, to the uh, P ratios and also when they release the results because it's roughly every six months, uh, roughly at the same date that they will release. So when a release is coming closer, watch out for trading updates that you'll find on Sense. That will give you an indication because a lot of times the share price moves more on the trading update. When the results come out, it's usually within that range and then the share doesn't really move. Sometimes if it's at the top end or the bottom end, it, might, it will move. But uh, a, few, a month or so before the uh, actual release of the results, you'll find trading updates. A company must give a trading update if their profits are going to be 20% um, uh, more or less than the last previous years. So then it must give a trading update. Uh, so if it doesn't give a trading update, you know it's got, probably going to be within 20%. Okay, so... That's, uh, that's, that's what I, I do when I trade uh, short term is get a group of companies that I want to watch, stick to them, and uh, look at the technicals at, to time my purchase. Oh, okay, points of entry, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so this is the fundamental pages. Let me just go back up. And... Uh, yeah, the maps, have, uh, I, I hope this has got a Java in, you've, uh, I think you've got Java, they checked that your laptops have got Java. Uh, maps is just a, a unique tool that we've got uh, that gives you a lot of information on one page. So during the day, you can look at the top 40 index or the mid-cap 60 index, which is basically your top 100. It's the top 40 and the mid-cap 60 that gives you your top 100 shares. Um, because it gives you a lot of information on all those shares at one stage. See, there's the top 40 and the mid cap. Okay. So there's the mid cap. What it shows you um, is firstly the, how much the share price moved during the day. Or you can look at year to date and, and, and others as well. You see, there's a, a year to day, 52 weeks and 26 weeks. But uh, mostly you'll use it for today. So this was on uh, Thursday, just before the long weekend. Um, so if you look at that, it firstly shows you where the action took place. Because the brighter the red, the more the share price went down.
the brighter the green, the more sh the share price went up. So it's not just like some of the websites have got red and green, but not gradients of color. In gradients of colors, you can quickly see there, PSG was down 2.4%. This one is a little bit darker, minus 1.75%. Hoskin was only down 0.9%. It's a darker red. You can see the greens as well. Foshini is up nearly 2%. Mr. Price was up 0.8%. So it's a darker green. And black obviously is very little movement. So you'll see there, life healthcare is virtually flat. Also, the size of the block is the size of the market capitalization of that share in this whole index. So the bigger shares have bigger blocks. Um, and uh, that gives you quite, quite a lot of information. Okay, so just a lot of information on one, one page if you want to see how the market's moving. Just a few things how to use the charting, as some of you have used it. Okay, this is the all share index, but we can use, yeah, let's use a company. Uh, let's use Sonlam. Usually the first one that comes to mind for me because they pay my salary. <laughs> okay, so firstly, that's the chart. Um, I don't like the horizontal cursor line. So you right click and you say uh, cursor and you click on that and you remove the horizontal cursor line because it clutters the thing for me. I like to look at, at uh, check candlesticks or, or actually high low. So chart type, you can change to candlesticks uh, or open high low close, which is your normal bar chart. Technical analyst, you honest, always use bar charts. Yeah. So let's do candlesticks, they look nice. Okay, how do you change the moving averages? Very easy, you just click in the box. And let's make that one a, a five day. And that one we can leave it a we, we can leave that at a twenty six day. So you see immediately uh, it change the, the line will change. Let's make that a fifty. There's a 50-day moving average, so the red one changed there. Okay, um, I want to look at the one-year chart. You click on one. Three years, five years, whatever. You can move the um, starting date or the end date. You just click there and you move the, the time scale. Um, you can add the volume at the bottom there. Uh, you can, there you can add your oscillators. Um, so you can say I want a MACD there, and you can say I want a uh, stochastic there, and yeah, the MACD you can see what we spoke about earlier is about in the middle, but the uh, stochastic is uh, right quite, quite close to the bottom there. If the red line breaks up through the uh, blue line, it will be a buy indicator uh, on Sunlum. So at some stage, uh, it looks. Uh, so if I've identified Sunlam as, as a share that's good value, um, I think the P is maybe a bit high at this stage, but uh, financial shares are in favour. Uh, but I'll look here and say, no, I'm going to wait a few days. Let that uh, first break up. Uh, because an oscillator, you must remember, can't go lower uh, than minus uh, than zero. So while it's hovering there, the share price might, might keep on falling. But it's just staying there until it breaks up. Okay. So you can do all those things. You can draw trend lines by using your, um, your left uh, mouse. So I can draw a trend line there and things like that. Um, I can add a comparison share. just want to remove these now. So just to remove them, you go back to the stats one. Let's remove the volume. So I can compare that to old mutual. Now you've got two shares on, on the chart. 
Um, you can see Alt Mutual uh, did a bit better. Uh, if you move your cursor to the end period there, it tells you there at the top uh, that Sanam was up 8% over this period and Alt Mutual was up 27%. So there's a percentage gain for the share. If I want to look at it at the shorter term, uh, go there, take the cursor to the end. And it shows you there two percent and fifteen percent. So uh, that's uh, th uh, I think I hope it gives you a bit more uses for the charting that you may be new. Um, but I mean, you guys are young. I mean, young people don't find it difficult to find their way around websites because they just click on everything and do it. You know, you find interesting things. Uh, so I think those are the major things that I I can show you. You can hide the, hide, the, hide the moving averages if you want a clear chart, and then you can add Bollinger Bands and stuff like that. There's the Bollinger Bands um, and things like that. So it's a, it's a very good charting that you get for free on Sunlam iTrade. The only thing you can't do is you can't do searches to the whole database. Therefore, the, for that you need to download, uh, you need to download uh, all the share prices and stuff. You need a download service so that you can run uh, things, uh, searches. There is a search, however, that I forgot to tell you about on uh, share data. Uh, well, it's not a search, you can rank. So you can rank companies according to their P-E ratios. It's under the toolbox, ranking tables, by market cap, by P-E ratio, and things like that. So it will rank all the shares. Uh, you can see which shares have got high and low P-E ratios quickly. Good. Market info. Uh, we had a holiday on Friday, so that's why that's not showing anything. Uh, there's a, every day there's a daily uh, market commentary. Useful to read. Written by SPI. They know what they're doing, although they're more focused on the long, more focused on the long term. Uh, but uh, it's good to read that. Um, there is some news. But this is old stuff. I hope you are all on social media. Because that's where you get news the first. Except for sense news, like results. Um, if, it's, if there's a press conference, the reporters sit there and they tweet. CNBC reporters sit there and they tweet out of the meeting room. And you see it on Twitter first. And I've had these guys at SPI, uh, these big portfolio managers, they don't believe in, in social media. They look at serious things. They've got Bloomberg terminals that cost $3,000 a month, and they look at that. You know, they don't know what's social media. But then I get, a, they send out an email saying, why is Aspen moving up? And then I send them, it was on Twitter five minutes ago, Aspen is looking at a takeover. Yeah. Uh, you know, it leaked into social media. You see it first on Twitter, and then you'll see it on the internet. And then you'll see it uh, in the print media or on TV. So, yeah, do, do use the, the Twitter. I, uh, I don't know if you know my handle, as I say, at I say I trade. I look at about 110 or so. I don't make it too big. But look at the guys that I follow as well. It's good to follow them. Um, uh, Bronwyn Nielsen, uh, some of the... Uh, newspapers have got good, I don't follow all of them, because some of them like to tell you that they're having coffee at this restaurant, and I really don't need to know that. Uh, <coughs> so I, I follow the more serious ones, uh, but there are some good ones. Uh, Chris Hart is a good economist to follow, and so on. Uh, good. So, that is the iTrade website. Let's quickly go to the trading website. Okay, th this is uh, the test account that we use to test all the virtual competition things. So there's already a few trades. Um, I think you've, you've, you know how to trade mostly. Um, the easy w easiest way is obviously to click on a bidder on offer. You know that. Uh, you don't have to remember the share code. If in the watch list you see a share you want to trade, uh, click on the uh, offer and it will open a buy ticket for you. And you just have to enter your details. Um, do you know how to set up watch lists for yourself and save them? Not, not everybody. Okay, let's just quickly do that. Um, 
And what have we got there? Account. So change. So you click on that uh, menu button there, and you go to quote. Quote is your watch list. Okay. So now I want to add shares there. So let's say I put in Sonlam and Old Mutual and Anglos. So I put in a few shares. You could put in up to uh, 50 shares, I think, on a watch list. Now I have to save it. So you click on watch list and you go to save watch list and you give it a name. So it's number one. And where are we? So you've got watch list number one. And then you just go to user safe settings. If I want that watch list to come up every time when I go into my page, you save the settings because whatever you change on the on the view that you've got, you must save the settings and it will always open like that. Because I like the, the three, three uh, block view rather than the four blocks that you start off with. So how do I do that? Um, you go to the menu button. Uh, okay, no, sorry, not right click. And you go to user options. And you go to layout. I think this might be a trader login. Uh, uh, but uh, so you can choose then if you want four blocks, one big block, and two smaller blocks, or you want two blocks. You can choose it. Then go always go to save settings. User safe settings. And then it will open like that. Okay. So uh, good. You, you, I'd, as, as far as I know, that, that stop losses are not part of the virtual trader, virtual platform. Uh, we'll see if we can do it. I'll talk to, to Perisys to see if we can add that for you because obviously uh, if you're not there watching all the time, you need to put in a stop loss. Um, there is a video that tells you how to, to do stop losses if we get it going. It's called contingent orders. So all it does, it says you've got to say at what price must, must my order be triggered, my sell order. Um, so let's say... Uh, Sunlam is trading at 48 rand. You want to sell if they you want to sell that when it gets to 45. So you put in a trigger at 45 and say, okay, the minimum price is 44. Always put your trading price, minimum trading price, lower than your trigger price. Otherwise, it will trigger, it will put in an order to sell, but it won't sell because chances are the market will keep on falling or something. So put the sell order price lower than your trigger price. Um, it helps a lot if, you, if you're away. Take profit. Take profit, uh, take profit is, is just a sell order. So when you, when you bought the shares, you can put in an order to sell at 55 rand. So it's, it's, it's just a sell order. It doesn't have to be, a, you can do a contingent, but, but why? You can just put in an order to sell at, 40, at 55 rand. When it gets there, it sells. Just put it in for more than one day. Put it in for a uh, period. Can you show us the contingent order? I will log in quickly on the, on the real trading website and I'll show you. Okay, there I go. <coughs> okay, so um, I want to do a contingent order of shares in my portfolio. Uh, that's another thing that you can look at, uh, just for some ideas. We've got a portfolio on our Facebook called the iTrade Fantasy League, where we allow the, f the fans on Facebook to select shares for a portfolio. And we invested a real million rand into this portfolio. 
um, and they manage it through every month. They can vote shares, like it and li dislike it, and the top five shares we change if there's a change. So we, they manage the portfolio through the nine months, and they can win uh, the profits. Um, but there's 20 shares that are doing quite well. It's not a bad portfolio. I think it's up about 9% already uh, since March. Okay, now if I want to go and do a, a contingent order, uh, what have I got there? Okay. So, there you will find the contingent order pad button. So, if we can add it for you, you'll find a separate button for contingent orders. Okay, so contingent order pad. See, I've got one there. Um, <coughs> let's put in another one. Um, so, I want to sell. Uh, let's just change this to the I Trade Fantasy League. I want to sell AGL. Okay. Um, so I have filled in my trigger price. Uh, so I want to sell, say, if Anglo seats. Uh, 200, well, I, yeah, I can delete it. So let's say at 200 Rand. It's always in cents, huh? Always in cents. Don't make that mistake. It's always in cents. So don't put 200 if you mean 200 Rand. And then I say, and I say, order volume, I want to sell 10, and my order price. Uh, I would say 190. Okay, so the minimum price that I'm that I want to sell at is 190 rand, but the order triggers at 200. If there's a buyer at 199 or 198, it will sell. It will just won't sell it lower than 190. So if I go to, I have to put in my password. Fantasy League Portfolio. Come, come. Oh, there it is. So there's my Anglo-American stop-loss order um, that will trigger uh, and, and put in a sell order if, it, if the price hits there. If I want to take profits, I just put in, say, want to sell at 300 Rand, just put in an order to sell at 300 Rand. You don't have to do a contingent for that. Okay, so let me just delete it. You can amend or delete it. Um, meet my password again. For the virtual, you don't need to put in your password all the time because uh, you're not working with real money. But you can uh, understand why for real trading, we need the password to make sure. Okay. Is there anybody uh, that has got more questions about the trading website, the IRIS? Just uh, for the portfolio, could you show us there's a market balance, an available balance, a total portfolio, just what each column means, please. Okay. You've got your start of day balance, which is the cash available at the beginning of the day. And then you've got your, uh, which is the available balance, intraday. So if I put in an order, you'll see that my available balance will reduce. Okay. Um, unsettled buys, an unsettled value. Um, that's the number of shares that's uh, not settled yet. JC settlement is T plus 5. I'm not so sure if you'll get that on virtual. Uh, but uh, that means it is not settled yet. Does, don't worry too much about those columns. Um, and then you've got the in-market buy and in-market sell. Those are orders that's in the market. You'll see them here, in-market. If, if it's already filled, you'll see that under buy volume and buy value. If it's not filled, it will be in market buy. Okay, then it's still sitting in the market. You can also go to your order pad and you'll see how much of your order is filled or if it's not filled or whatever. There's one thing I, I, I want to show you on the order pad. Um,
just to explain that. So you can see there, so there's a order. Um, order status must be active unless it is filled. Okay. So if it's not active, then the order is not currently in the market. If you put in an order over the weekend, it will show pending or something like that. But if it's inactive, um, it's not in the market. So you must go and see what uh, did it fill? Was it executed? Or is there something wrong? So here it says it's inactive, but the latest action that I did was cancel. And the, act, act, the status is OK. So the cancel is OK. If you did an amendment and it says active, last action amend, uh, action status not OK, then there's something wrong. It must also be OK. So that will tell you your last action, whether you put in the order, whether you amended it, or deleted it, or whatever, is it OK? But active tells you if it's in the market or not. But if it's filled, it will not be active. OK. So maybe just look at that. I just want to know that um, you know there's a bit of a, a delay in uh, the time at, at which you put in an order and the time at which it's executed. Mm. And so at what price uh, are you, will you then be buying the, 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 the share? Is it at the time that you put in the order or the time that you No, um, it, 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 the, the delay is seconds. It is very fast. It's, it's not like last year when they had, didn't have a trading system. Um, the, it's within seconds. The order will go in and it will get filled. The, the, the best is to put your, if you want to buy a share, put your buy price a little bit higher than the current offer, uh, or current ask. Then you'll make sure, because if the ask is still there, let's say uh, the ask price uh, is 100 rand. You put in a buy price at 101. If the offer of 100 is still in the market, it will trade at 100, not at 101. If the, in that second that you enter the order, that guy with 100 cancels his order to sell or somebody else buys the shares in the, that second, which is not, that doesn't happen often, but it can. And the next offer is 100 rand and 50 cents. Then you'll trade at 100 rand and 50 cents, but you'll make sure you'll get it. So put it a bit high, especially you're trading in the top 100 shares. They are all liquid shares. You know, you're not trading in some of these small shares that the bid and offer spreads are wide. Normally, you can do it. Unfortunately, on, on, on the virtual, you no, don't have the option to put a market in at market. In, at market means just the best price I can get. So then there's, there's no limit. Uh, for the virtual trader, unfortunately, you have to put in a limit. But just put it a little bit higher than the ask price. Or if you want to sell, put it a bit lower than the, the buy price. Then you, you ensure that you'll get the trade immediately. And you always trade at the best price that's available in the market. Yeah, and the summary. I, can, I just need to know, where is it where we can actually track our total um, um, pre, I mean profits? Well, yeah, like, that's so the... the because it can, it, it, it can actually confuse you if you look at it, because sometimes it says total portfolio, then it's a, there's a GLV value, I think, down there. I think that is better now because you know what? <coughs> the, uh, they, uh, they, they mixed equity trading and uh, CFD trading. And uh, we are going to start CFD trading within the next few weeks. And it was a very confusing summary. So they've now split it. So they now pick up if you trade, if you're portfolio is a CFD account or whether it's a uh, equity account. So you see there's no more GLV there. Um, so you will look at your total portfolio. That is what, it's, what the value is now. It's a cash and your profits and losses, everything included in your total portfolio. I would notice one day it would be a gain of 10 grand. But when I look at my total value, it was about... Uh, one, one, one million one hundred, I mean, no, one million one thousand, yeah, yeah. but I gained like ten grand that day, so yeah. Yeah, but uh, you can gain ten grand on a million portfolio, intraday profits, yeah, it can happen, but the GLV, that was, that is your uh, net asset value on CFDs. When we look at total portfolio. Yeah, total portfolio, that shows you the market value plus your cash uh, available. 
Okay. So the, the total portfolio shows the initial value that you had plus the gains. No, total portfolio shows your current market value of the shares now and your cash. So the value of the shares plus the cash. Uh, your, your start value was 1 million. Your start value will be 1 million. Uh, you won't see that. You won't see and go back to that. Because people add money and deduct, withdraw money. But your, t so your total portfolio is your market value plus your cash. Is what you've what you've got now. So what is actual value? The actual value uh, that was I think that was the purchase price. As I understand it should be your uh, end of day value. And your market value should be intraday. But obviously it's not the case here. Because market value plus Available balance doesn't add up to total portfolio. It's like short by one round. I'll check up on this. This is, this is uh, one of our test accounts, uh, so I'll check up on that. But yours should be okay. But we can email me if you've got uh, an example that doesn't look right, and I'll get the explanations to you. <coughs> they they have a a help as well, which you can use, and the user, and that will give you explanations of the headings and, and things like that. Uh, I've showed you how to change the blocks, but you can also change your columns. Um, let me just quickly show you that. If you go back to the detail. If you click on that settings button and you go to the holdings, <coughs> you can add or remove columns or you can move them around. If you want to see the uh, the code before the description. You just move it up and you see now the code is before the description of the share. So you can add or uh, remove the columns and change them. Okay. don't know what I wanted to say as well. Okay. But I'm available all the time. Email me or call me. Um, I'm not sure when you're starting to trade. Are you starting to trade on Monday? As far as I know, you, you can start on Monday. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, email us, call us. Um, obviously, you know, things can happen with a system. Uh, if, there's a, if, you have a, if there was a problem, notify me immediately. Don't a week later come and say, but I put in an order last week and the system did not buy it. Now it's up. It's not going to work. You have to do it immediately so that we can say, okay, fault was on our side, we'll give you the sale, or um, no. But in general, you just have to put in order again. But if you see something wrong, just notify us immediately. Don't wait, see if it's in a profit. Then it's a closed book. Okay. Check your order pad. Did it go through? Is it in? Okay. But we've got locks of everything. I mean, the computer has a lock of every page that you visited, when you clicked, what millisecond that you click on buy and entered the order. You know, so we've got locks, we can check anything. But obviously a lot of work, so we don't want to spend too much time on it if it's unnecessary. So make this look as easy as, as you want it. Lots of columns you don't want, then just delete them uh, so that you can make the view as easy as possible. Um, and uh, yeah, and then take a few chances. You know, it is a shortish term. I'm not going to be able to give you tips and advice unless you see it in the public domain of uh, I say I trade. And things like that. I do sometimes see things that's happening. Well, I'm also more longer term. I'm an economist, so I'm not a share analyst. So I see more trends and strategies and longer term stuff. But sometimes they work in the short term as well. And I can only say good luck. Enjoy it. Learn as much as you can. Only one person can win. Sometimes it's uh, by luck. 
I've seen it in the last, uh, <coughs> the virtual competition we had. Uh, the, the first guy and the third guy, they both had the same share. can't remember what was the name. Lonman, yeah, Lonman, recovered quite steeply, uh, you know, of all the bad publicity. The Monday, it fell 8%. They would have battled to be in the top 50, but the competition closed on the Friday, so there was a bit of luck. <coughs> but uh, I think it's more about the learning experience, really. Um, and, uh, yeah, make the best of it. Take a few chances, but don't take too many chances because you might find yourself right out of it early uh, and yeah see how you would do it if, if it was your money you can, tweet me. Uh, you can tweet me yeah yeah not not ask me what's the best share today because I don't even know <laughs> if I knew that I wouldn't be working <laughs> what's the Twitter handle again I, uh, I at I say I trade yeah, because I trade is our website I say it's just to put on to it. Yeah, gentlemen, any questions? Okay, yes. Sir. Is there somebody, a direct line to somebody who we can call if we're having a technical issue? Yeah, um, yeah, you can, I don't have a number now. Uh, let me email it, send me an email. You know what my email is, head at Sondam I trade? Yes. Yeah, head at Sondam I trade. .co.za. Uh, just send me a reminder and I'll send you the Claudia's number, she's the best for IT, and then on the competition issues, uh, you email me. Mm. But I'll give you Claudia, if you, if you phone the, sweet, the number on the website, ask for Claudia. And if she's not there, Jock. Jock is the IT manager, and Claudia is his assistant. And they'll help you. If you're not set up properly or something, you can quickly do that. Thank you, gents.